This is the story of how Taiwan, a small island in the South China Sea, overcame Japanese and Chinese influence, rising to become one of the world's most successful and prosperous countries. Taiwan is a small island nation in East Asia. It's geographically located off the southeastern coast of China, between Japan to the north and the Philippines to the south. Rugged mountains, rolling plains, and sandy beaches are some of the features you'll notice on this island. Over the past several decades, Taiwan has transformed itself from an agricultural society into an economic powerhouse. Today, Taiwan is known for its innovation, technological prowess, and industrial manufacturing capabilities, particularly in the electronics and technology sectors. It is home to leading technology companies like Foxconn, TSMC, and Acer, among others. Taipei, the capital of Taiwan, is located in the northern part of the island and is bordered by the Zindian River on the south and the Tamsu River on the west. The city is a cultural hub with a rich blend of Chinese, Southeast Asian, and Japanese influences. Historical sites like the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall and the National Palace Museum, which houses one of the largest collections of Chinese imperial artifacts in the world, highlight this nation's deep historical roots. The city is also known for its modern architecture, including the Taipei 101, once the world's tallest building. And this skyscraper is a landmark that symbolizes Taiwan's economic growth and transformation into a modern, advanced society. However, it's not all roses and sunshine for Taiwan, as this progress came with deep-rooted difficulty, and as you'll find out, it's still facing challenges today. Politically speaking, the status of Taiwan remains a subject of international debate, with China claiming sovereignty over Taiwan and one day hopes to reunite the island with mainland China. However, it's not that simple as Taiwan is a multi-party democracy, with a president as the head of state and a separate legislative branch. It has its own constitution, government, and military, operating essentially as a sovereign state. However, it's still not recognized as a sovereign state by the United Nations. So, why has this small island become so vital, influencing global trade, politics, technology, and business in ways that extend far beyond its geographical borders. What's the story behind Taiwan's economic success? And how did a once poverty-stricken country climb the economic ladder to become one of the most prosperous nations in the world? This is how Taiwan rose to become one of the world's most successful, influential, and prosperous countries. Taiwan, now a strong economy, had its share of challenges in the past. It used to be under Japanese colonial control from 1895 to 1945, a time when Japan was expanding its empire in Asia. This period was important for Taiwan because it saw a lot of modernization and growth in industries and infrastructure, thanks to the Japanese. This influence from Japan played a big part in shaping Taiwan's progress and development even affecting its education system. Today, Japanese influence is still a big part of how Taiwanese society grows and develops. After Japan lost World War II, Taiwan was handed over to the Republic of China. This momentous change was partly because of the complicated international politics at the time, including issues between China and Japan. For Taiwan, this meant adjusting to a new government and way of life. It was a major change moving from Japanese rule to Chinese control. This not only changed Taiwan's political situation, but also affected its culture and society, as it started to follow the systems and policies of the Republic of China. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, many economists didn't see much hope for Taiwan's economy. They thought this because Taiwan had little land for its considerably large population, few natural resources, not enough money, and the government people didn't trust much. But things didn't go as the economists expected. Taiwan's economy actually grew incredibly fast and did so well that people started calling it an economic miracle. Back then, Taiwan's economy was primarily agriculture-based, 
and a lot of the people were farmers, so some of the first economic developments were related to agriculture. This period saw the first of three major reforms in the economy that would have a profound impact and be the foundations that transformed the poor island into a prosperous nation. The first big changes in the economy happened in 1949. The government lowered the rent farmers had to pay, and in 1951, they started selling government-owned farmland. Then, in 1953, they made a rule that the people who worked the land could own it. These reforms were really important for kickstarting Taiwan's journey to become more industrial and helped a lot in making its economy grow later on. Taiwan initially grew a lot of sugarcane, which they used to send to other countries to be processed into sugar. But then, they started making their own sugar mills. This meant they could sell sugar directly instead of just the raw sugar cane. Also, business people in Taiwan noticed that mushrooms were in demand overseas, so they began growing them for export. These steps further played a big role in changing Taiwan's economy for the better. Even though Taiwan's economy started with the agricultural revolution, manufacturing is now the backbone of the economy. This change started in the late 1950s and was a time of rapid growth, with the economy expanding by about 12% each year. And a lot of the workers for these new factories came from the farming sector, especially young women. Because there were enough people ready and willing to work, Taiwan's factories could increase their output without having to increase their salaries. Manufacturing grew even faster in the 1960s and 70s, as it reached rates that were almost unprecedented in world history. During those years, Taiwan's industrialization was growing twice as fast as the United Kingdom and Japan during their own periods of industrial growth. By the mid-1980s, Taiwan had become one of the world's largest producers of computers and computer peripherals. It also succeeded in establishing steel and shipbuilding industries. But these weren't as important as the enterprises manufacturing technology products. The reason for that is Taiwan's economy is based primarily on small and medium-sized companies, unlike Japan and South Korea, which are known for their large corporate conglomerate. In the 1980s, Taiwan started working in high-tech. Today, it is home to some of the world's best companies that produce the semiconductor chips that power everything from mobile phones to electric cars, making up 15% of Taiwan's GDP. Taiwan produces over 60% of the world's semiconductors and over 90% of the most advanced ones. And all this is because of one company in particular. The island nation of Taiwan owes much of its stellar growth to the glowing fortunes of its leading chipmaker, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, which is at the forefront of the global tech race, even outpacing China. The semiconductor industry has come to be known as Taiwan's Silicon Shield, giving the world a big reason to defend the island. And it's one of the reasons why the United States is arming the island, which I'll get into in more detail later in this video. Having enjoyed a real GDP growth of 7.5% in the 1980s and the 1990s on the back of a world-class electronics manufacturing sector, in the last 20 years, its growth has stabilized at around 3.5% annually. So, how did they do it? Here are some of the key strategies that got them where they are today. Throughout its history, Taiwan has been an important trading power, acting as a major commercial hub in East Asia. When China governed Taiwan, there was substantial trade between the island and the mainland. However, during the Japanese colonial era, Taiwan's trade was predominantly with Japan. In the early post-World War II era, Taiwan's leaders recognized the island's scarcity of natural resources, particularly fossil fuels. This realization led them to emphasize the importance of trade as a crucial means of survival. Exports were vital for financing the imports needed due to these resource limitations. Initially, Taiwan implemented a policy of import substitution, setting high tariffs to support its emerging industries. Nonetheless, this approach was soon abandoned and replaced by a strategy focused on vigorously boosting exports. 
A key aspect of this new strategy involved producing higher value goods and enhancing their quality. This strategy proved extremely effective, to the extent that it started surpassing Japan in trade volume and becoming a development model that challenged the dependency theory often associated with developing countries. A notable aspect of Taiwan's approach was the establishment of export processing zones. The zones attracted foreign companies with huge tax incentives and other benefits. In return, these companies provided training to the local labor force and fostered spin-off businesses, which is a vital component to the success of the Taiwan model. This model also included low taxes, efficient infrastructure, social stability, and a strong educational system. Like the Asian tigers of the 1980s to the 1990s, Taiwan's successful export model was based on the clever strategy of earning foreign income that allowed the nation to invest in new factories and roads, which, in turn, were crucial to improving productivity. Rising foreign exchange reserves also helped Taiwan be insulated from currency crises. As a result, Taiwan's capitalist democratic model, coupled with sound industrial policies, helped build up one of the most competitive electronics manufacturing sectors in the world. Accounting for 63% of the nation's GDP, Taiwan's electronic exports have grown by an average of 7% annually over the last five years, making it the seventh most dependent economy in global value chains. However, this export-reliant model is built on years of enormous investment spending. Of course, this success did not come without some help. From 1950 to 1965, US foreign assistance to Taiwan averaged 6.5% of Taiwan's GDP, and achieving a high level of economic growth in Taiwan was considered a US national security priority. Following the end of the Second World War, the US supported Chiang Kai-shek, the then leader of the Republic of China, even after the communists expelled him from the mainland. The US provided substantial development and defense aid, including the capital goods, industrial materials, and human capital needed to transform Taiwan into a modern industrial economy. With this help, the small island nation, over many years, transformed into a modern industrialized nation. For the past four decades, Taiwan's growth has been propelled by its ability to establish trade relations with foreign partners. Today, Taiwan maintains a diverse set of trade partners, but its most important partners are China, accounting for about a quarter of Taiwan's total trade, the US, Japan, Hong Kong, and the European Union. In just a few decades, Taiwan has become an indispensable link in the world's supply chains, which is of paramount importance, not only to Taiwan, but also to the global economy and it owes a large part of it to the country's strategic geographical location. Besides technology, Taiwan also holds vital strategic importance due to where it is positioned. Along with Japan to the north and the Philippines to the south, Taiwan is part of the first island chain along China's coast. Taiwan is situated in close proximity to some of the world's largest and most dynamic economies, facilitating trade and serving as a gateway to these lucrative markets. At the heart of East Asia, it provides easy access to major international shipping routes, such as the port of Kaohsiung and Taichung, which are well connected to global trade networks, making it an essential transshipment hub for cargo destined for various parts of the world. So far, things seem to be working out for them. But has it always been smooth sailing? Apart from the traditional challenges that a developed economy like Taiwan faces, such as an aging population and a fairly limited domestic market, Taiwan is at the center of a superpower rivalry between China and the United States, with the Beijing government aiming to reunify with the island in the not-too-distant future. Well, she says Taiwan seeks, quote, peaceful coexistence with Beijing with free and unrestricted interaction between people on both sides. The tensions, coupled with the post-pandemic global shortage of semiconductor chips, have intensified, with the chipmaker, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, 
at the forefront of the global tech race. But before considering the geopolitical ramifications of this tech giant, we have to understand Taiwan's economic struggles and what they've done to overcome them. Taiwan's export destinations and sectors are both geographically focused. The majority of its remarkable export growth originates from the information and communication technology sector, with minimal contributions from textiles, agriculture, small and medium-sized enterprises, or traditional manufacturing, all of which remain important parts of the Taiwanese economy. However, Taiwan's over-reliance on one sector poses a huge risk and could one day bring the country down. When an economy heavily relies on a single industry, it limits jobs and equal opportunities for its workforce. Taiwan is falling into a high-income trap, characterized by demographic decline, increased inequality, and growing social divides. On one hand, workers in Taiwanese technology titans are working overtime and receiving huge year-end bonuses, while the rest of the country faces ongoing wage stagnation since 2000. The youth entering the job market are unable to grow and develop their careers, and in fact, unemployment for the youngest group is 12%, three times the national average. Though the government is searching for solutions to this problem and how to address the declining middle class, China appears to be a potential answer, yet a risky one for the island nation. Taiwan's economic struggles are further exacerbated by its political isolation on the international stage, a result of the One China Principle. China has forced countries that it has official relations with to stop recognizing Taiwan as a sovereign nation, and, as a result, Taiwan is only recognized officially by these 13 countries. This ambiguous status complicates Taiwan's participation in global institutions like the United Nations and its agencies, where important global decisions are made. The island's 23 million people cannot reap the benefits that are derived from full membership in most international organizations. They are unable to contribute their advanced knowledge, skills, and resources to global issues that affect them, such as civil aviation, natural disaster response, and regional economic collaboration. And this exclusion from international economic groups weakens Taiwan's global competitiveness and impedes the liberalization and regional integration of its domestic economy. Despite all these challenges, Taiwan has still managed to rise, which was witnessed during the recently ended global pandemic. As COVID-19 cases climb around the world once again, we take a closer look at the government that has most successfully tackled the pandemic in Asia, Taiwan. During this time, when almost all economies were devastated by governmental lockdowns, Taiwan was among the few countries that emerged not only unscathed, but with a slightly higher real GDP growth. Taiwan managed the spread of COVID-19 far better than most, and the country's ability to fight the virus illustrates its excellent public health infrastructure and health policy expertise, supported by extensive data and digital technology. Taiwanese people have also demonstrated a high level of trust toward both their government and their fellow citizens, and achieved by applying lessons learned fighting the SARS pandemic in 2003. Despite the sluggish global economy, Taiwan saw record exports, fueled by a surge in worldwide demand for its technology components and products. This growth was driven primarily by the need for remote work and online education. As I mentioned previously, Taiwan is at the forefront of the semiconductor industry, catering to a growing market for the most sophisticated chips used in cars, 5G networks, and smart devices. While other export-focused countries struggled due to strained US-China relations, Taiwan's economy actually thrived, with its tech companies becoming global frontrunners in an ever-digitizing world. Taiwan has successfully navigated numerous challenges to become a dynamic and influential economic force globally. However, the future of its economy remains uncertain, as tensions between China and the US escalate.
China's foreign minister has warned that there will be, quote, confrontation and conflict between China and the U.S. if Washington does not change its approach to his country. China now warning Taiwan it is, quote, ready to fight. China's military said today it's ready to fight after completing three days of large-scale war games that simulated the blockade of Taiwan. The relationship between the United States, the People's Republic of China (PRC), and Taiwan is a complex and sensitive international issue that has evolved over the decades. At the heart of this intricate democratic and geopolitical trade-off lies the question of Taiwan's status and the delicate balance of power and interests between these three entities. The One China policy is a central element of this relationship. China still insists that there is only one China, with it as its sole legitimate government. While on the other hand, Taiwan maintains its independence, its own government, and has developed its own political and economic systems, effectively functioning as a separate state. China's natural gravitational pull, however, is so large that it is still an easier source of growth than trying to find new markets elsewhere. After Taiwan democratized, it developed a different set of political and civic values from those in China. Now, only 1% of Taiwanese people support immediate unification with the mainland, and Xi Jinping's goal of unification with Taiwan within his lifetime appears increasingly elusive. China is continuously intensifying its military, economic, and diplomatic coercion of Taiwan which it considers a piece of lost territory that must be returned, and by force if necessary. And, while China has exerted similar economic pressure on countries like Australia and South Korea, the stakes are even higher for Taiwan, because China wants to subsume it politically. This has brought the cross-strait political atmosphere to perhaps its lowest point since the two countries resumed relations in the 1990s. China is, of course, a natural trade and investment partner for Taiwan, given its common language and culture, its proximity, and the attraction of its lower wages and large market. Nonetheless, dependence poses risks for all of China's trade partners, as the US trade war with China has shown, and as China uses economic dependence for political leverage. It is therefore wise for Taiwan to diversify its commercial relationships. Taiwan has episodically tried to do so, first under former President Li Tang-hui's Go South policy in 1993, and now under current President Tsai Ing-wen's New Southbound policy since 2016. Both policies try to steer Taiwanese trade and investment away from China and back to Taiwan or Southeast Asia. While a war between China and the United States over Taiwan is neither imminent nor inevitable, rising tensions raise important first-order questions that need to be addressed. A battle between China and the U.S. over the self-governing island nation could result in devastating mutual losses. I'm Beijing with a show of force ahead of Taiwan's annual military exercises. For starters, why does Taiwan matter, and why should Americans care about its fate? How would Chinese aggression against Taiwan impact the United States? And should the U.S. protect its interest in Taiwan? While the United States is thousands of miles from Taiwan, the island's fate will have major implications for U.S. security and prosperity. What happens in the Taiwan Strait will also bear on fundamental questions of international order and the future of democracy for the island. Taiwan sits in an important position in the world's most economically powerful region. The country is located at a critical node within the first island chain, anchoring a network of U.S. allies and partners, stretching from the Japanese archipelago down to the Philippines and into the South China Sea. A position that is critical to the region's security and critical to the defense of vital U.S. interests in the Indo-Pacific. Taiwan's inherent military value cannot be wished away either. Instead, its location dictates that its fate will in large part determine the balance of power in the region. With Taiwan outside of its control, and U.S. allies and partners arrayed throughout the first island chain, 
China's military will struggle to project power far beyond China's shores. But in the event that Taiwan happens to be under China's control, it would be far more difficult for the United States to maintain a balance of power in the Indo-Pacific or prevent a Chinese bid for regional dominance. Politically, Taiwan is one of Asia's few democratic success stories and by some measures the region's freest society. Its open political system demonstrates to China's citizens that there is an alternative path of development for a majority ethnically Chinese society. If China were to take Taiwan by force, Taiwan's democracy would be extinguished and its 23 million people would see their rights severely curtailed. As China has done in the past with its crackdown on democracy in Hong Kong, for Taiwan, the ramifications would be even greater. Tensions in the Taiwan Strait have not only stoked fears of a conflict between China and Taiwan, but also raised questions about the implications of such a scenario for the global economy. A Chinese attack on Taiwan, regardless of its success or whether the United States chose to intervene, would trigger a global economic depression and shave trillions of dollars off global economic output. Taiwanese companies manufacture nearly 70% of the world's semiconductors and around 90% of the most advanced chips. If the world loses Taiwan's production capacity, no other company will be able to fill the gap in the short term. During a Chinese blockade or attack, the production and shipment of semiconductors would come to a halt, leading to a shortage of nearly every product that contains technology, from smartphones to computers and cars. Companies across a range of industries would have to reduce or even halt production. Taiwan's fate also has significant implications for global order. Following Russia's invasion unprovoked. of Ukraine, if China were to successfully absorb Taiwan, despite Taiwanese resistance, it would establish a pattern of authoritarian countries using force to attack democratic neighbors and change borders. One of the most basic pillars of international relations, that countries cannot use force to extend their borders, would be severely undermined. Taiwan's location is a risk in the face of China's military prowess and increasing assertiveness on the global stage. But at the same time, it may also be Taiwan's life insurance and greatest intangible asset as it caps the northeastern fringe of the South China Sea. According to calculations by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, roughly a third of global shipping passes through these waters. Both the US and China have a vital self-interest in friction-free operations in and around the Taiwan Straits, and that necessarily includes Taiwan's stability and security. How a conflict would unfold is impossible to predict, complicating any assessment of its economic and commercial consequences. Yet, the risks of a crisis around Taiwan have risen, making these questions more important than ever for policymakers and business leaders. If ever China makes good on its threats and attacks, there will be calls to help defend Taiwan. But the idea that, that it can be taken by force, just taken by force, is just not, it's just not appropriate. It will dislocate the entire region. But before the United States and the international community decide on a course of action, the most essential thing is to understand that Taiwan is by far one of the greatest influential economies and not a mere appendage of China. A huge part of Taiwan's economic future is riding on what China will do from here on out. From an economics and optics perspective though, China would not wish to be seen as taking over Taiwan purely as an economic prize instead of reclaiming it as its rightful sovereign territory. But, by the same token, in a decade's time, China's semiconductor capabilities may be able to narrow the technology gap with Taiwan. Whatever the outcome of the rivalry in the semiconductor industry, Taiwan's position as a leading player is expected to significantly impact the industry and the geopolitics of the region in the years ahead. And, as we know, a key pillar to Taiwan's success 
has been its strength in innovation and technological leadership. The country spends around 3.5% of its GDP on research and development, surpassed only by Israel and Korea. Regardless of the latest technologies, whether it be the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, or quantum computing, Taiwanese companies will remain well positioned to serve the global market. And that's where the strengths of Taiwanese companies come in to find ways to optimize the manufacturing process and later for clusters to launch new innovative products derived from the technology. So, while Taiwanese companies may not be the originators of new technologies, their speed to market and iterative innovation are a strategic advantage, allowing them to carve their own niche. The government also recognizes the benefits of diversifying its economy and is actively promoting strategic industry partnerships in order to achieve its efforts. While improved diversification would likely bode well for the country, it has also found strength and success by leveraging its skill-based comparative advantage to focus heavily on electronics. So, for Taiwan's success story to be sustainable, Taiwan must retain its leadership position in semiconductors, diversify its economy so that a broader segment of society enjoys its success, and strengthen its relations with more economic partners. Taiwan's path toward a sustainable economic future depends not only on a capable government, a hard-working population, and a more global outlook, but also on the support of the international community. Taiwan cannot resist the gravitational pull of the Chinese economy unless like-minded democracies, which may all eventually face their own versions of Taiwan's China dilemma, make a concerted effort to work together to protect Taiwan's autonomy and prosperity. In this regard, it would be wise for Taiwan to deepen economic bonds with its southern partners. Over the long term, Taiwan is likely to invest heavily in strengthening personal relationships with next-generation political and business leaders in ASEAN. And, if done right, such efforts will cultivate enduring support for Taiwan's role in and contributions to the region. As Taiwan continues to make strides in various industries, it is poised to remain a cornerstone of the global economy. Its reputation as a center of innovation and economic vitality will only strengthen, making it clear that Taiwan's indispensable role is a defining chapter in the unfolding narrative of our global economic landscape. In an era defined by rapid change and interconnectivity, Taiwan's rise to indispensability serves as a compelling case study of economic transformation and its far-reaching impact. Now, Britain is going through a housing disaster, with homelessness and poverty growing. How will the country tackle these severe challenges? To find out, click on this video.